Hey everyone. So now we are back in ZBrush and this time we are painting the albedo map using polypaint. Okay, let's go ahead and import our model and subdivide it a few times. Now let's change it to a clear material like skin shade 4 so that we can see the colors more clearly. To use polypaint in ZBrush, in the top toolbar, turn off Z add, and you have to turn on RGB. Let's enable posable symmetry in the highest subdivision. Remember, you have to enable posable symmetry in the highest subdivision. This option is very useful when you have an asymmetrical model. From the color menu, I enter this RGB code that I have picked from a reference and I click on fill object and this would be our base color. So you can use different references and you can pick your RGB code or you can just copy what I insert here. After that, I'm going to add a more greenish color around the bony areas like the forehead, like the around the eyes, cheeks, cheekbones, um, jawline, and a little bit around the ears. Then I'm adding a more saturated red on the tip of the nose and the lips After that, I am adding a bluish red around the eyelids. So it's, it's like a violet color, but it's more reddish than violet. I call it bluish red, I don't know. Now, to see the colors more clearly, you can change the material to flat color. So, flat color is just, just pure color. There's no reflection, there's no shadows, there's no ambient occlusion, just colors. Now we have our base colors based on the subject that we're working on. These were 
the primary colors of our character. Now, to add more details to the color, let's set the brush mode to spray. And let's try that in combination with different alphas. Okay. Okay, I'm sticking with alpha number 60. So, I'm using a vacuum. Wait, wait, it's not vacuum, it's vacuum. I'm using a vacuum into If you're using a pen that has pressure, it's much easier to paint inside the brush. If you're using a mouse, then good luck. I don't use a mouse and I will never use a mouse to paint. So, But seriously, if you're using a mouse, you can try, I don't know, try different intensities for each layer. You have to work on different layers, I guess, with different intensities. So now I am trying to blend the colors into each other. I don't want any color to stand out too much. It's just, it doesn't look natural. Maybe some specific areas that have dark spots and have, I don't know, skin conditions. You might want one color to stand out, but here in this level, we're just blending colors into each other.
A. I am trying different alphas and more intense colors to add dark spots to the skin, to add more imperfections to the skin. Especially since the subject is from 19th century, so you would expect that the skin would look rough relatively. Now, I have this image of a lightning, which is my favorite alpha of all time. As its structure is very similar to veins on human skin. So, we can blow the alpha uh, to make it easier to blend to, to the other colors. We don't want it to stand out too much. It depends on the age of your subject. The older the subject, the more transparent the skin would be. So the veins under the skin could be more visible compared to younger subjects. Here we have a not very old, but very young subject. So we can keep it, keep the intensity low. Now, to export the map, go to Ziplog menu. In the Multimedia Exporter submenu, highlight Texture from Polygon and select your map size. I'm exporting it in 8K. You might want to export it in 4K. And after that, just click on Create All Maps. Takes a minute. And here is our video map. Okay, that wraps up this episode. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to scout the skin details inside ZBrush, and that will be our displacement. See you.